Roswell flight test crew here today to take a look at the FLIR view. For those of you not familiar with FLIR, they are the world's premier company in thermal imaging. With more than 50 years of infrared innovation and a proud Roswell flight test crew sponsor. Well, let's take a look at the box then. So here we go. Let's see the box here. Actually, it gives you some uh, little pictures in the back here. It says building inspection, natural resource protection, and search and rescue. Some things you can use this for. So let's take a look at what's inside the box. Okay, so let's pull it out of here. A little camera. And this is the FLIR view. Take a quick peek at it, and it looks like it's got a few mounting options, little screw holes on the side here. It's also got a quarter 20 mount for a tripod mount. That's pretty handy. On the other side here, we have a USB. That is where it gets its power from and video output. And I'm going to remove the the lens barrel real quick, this little front piece here, and take off what they call the snout mount. What this is, is designed to accept GoPro mounts. So this little aluminum piece here, you can mount this camera the same way you would a GoPro. I love that option. It's got a little tabs in there to keep the orientation straight so it doesn't rock around. Put this back on here. Next thing we have, we have a lens cap. Now that's extremely important because this is a germanium lens. If you get oils on that, let's say you touch it for example, you could ruin the lens or reduce its functionality. So you wanna clean it with soap and water only. No harsh chemicals and don't touch it, even if it looks dirty. So just put the little cap on there, keeps it protected, that's kinda nice. And last but not least, a cable. Now this is referred to as a bench cable. What it is, is it's USB which plugs into the camera on one side. The other side goes to your computer, to the graphical user interface, or the GUI. Also, this is a video out, so you can plug into a monitor to check your settings and see how the image looks. So what we have set up here, we have the FLIR view on a tripod, and then we have a hook to a computer so we can go through the GUI. First thing you wanna do is download the GUI from FLIR. After that, when you've installed it, you connect the camera, it'll automatically install the USB drivers for you, and then you select the type of camera you're hooking up to the system. So in this case, it's a UAS for the FLIR view. Once you do that, you'll be presented with a pretty basic but very intuitive little screen here where you can configure some of the features of the camera. First, I'm gonna do orientation. So here we have the image. We can invert the image and put it back. And we can also flip the image left to right. And then, of course, back. Other features we have are NTSC and PAL, or we can digitally zoom. Now, of course, you're reducing the overall resolution of the camera by doing this, so typically better is to record, you know, without zoom. Now, another neat feature is the color palette. So, in this particular one, it's called white hot. The hottest thing in the field of view here will be white, and the coldest black. We can also change it to black hot, which basically inverts that. And then other features, fusion, arctic, lava, gray red, iron bow, insta alert, and green hot. Those are the color palettes on this particular camera. I'm gonna go back to white hot because, well, green looks a little creepy. Down below here are a few more buttons. Save settings, so whenever you make changes, you wanna save your settings. So that's the default power-up defaults for the camera. And factory defaults resets it in case you mess things up. Reset camera just resets the camera and undoes temporary settings. And do FFC, this is a flat field correction. What it does is this is an uncooled camera core, so over time the image degrades. The flat field correction will retain the image quality. It's a small arm, wipes in front of the camera, it's flat field and corrects any image distortions or lingering effects from the thermal imager, and then resumes. So while you're flying, let's say I'll try moving here in front of the camera, if I do FFC right now, the image freezes, and then resumes again. Perfectly normal. It does that basically as the camera warms up and things change. Either a certain temperature or a certain number of frames makes the image nice and clean for you. Next we have here the scene presets. These are essentially like, like gamma settings or contrast settings. If you look at the screen here, as I switch to, let's say, see sky, indoors, 
outdoors, and linear, the image on the screen looks a little bit different each time, sometimes a little bit more contrasty, sometimes less so. The last thing we have here is the region of interest, very, very important feature. Now this tells the camera what to pay attention to. The top third is being ignored because that's typically where the sky is, and you want to look at the ground, so the bottom two thirds are basically what's most important. So this can be moved around. If you aim the camera straight down, you can increase this, and it'll take the entire image into account. So the image itself will change based on what's in this square box here. And if you want a specific area, you can narrow this or move it around. I'm gonna say set the region of interest. And if you look at the FLIR image, it only responds to things in the corner, like my hand going up here. Take it away and note the screen changes. It only looks at what it, what's in this little area here. That's it. So wherever this box is set is what the camera is going to pay attention to. So again, typically, you know, the default settings are really good for flying forward. When you go to purchase a FLIR view, there are three choices you're going to have to make. What resolution you want, what lens you want to put on the camera, and what frame rate you want it to capture and display at. And the two resolutions which are available are 640 by 512 pixels and 336 by 256 pixels. For the high resolution camera, there's a 9mm lens available, a 13mm lens available, and a 19mm lens available, each one with a decreasing field of view. For the lower resolution camera, there's a 6.8mm lens available, a 9mm lens, and a 13mm lens. The cameras are also available in two frame rates, 30Hz, which is to say 30 frames per second, or 7.5Hz, about 7 frames per second. 30Hz is clearly better, however, it's illegal to transport a 30Hz camera outside the United States. One final important note. For some reason, the FLIR view doesn't include an integrated voltage regulator. So if you connect it to a power source that provides more than 6 volts, you're going to fry your camera and void the warranty. So be very careful with that. All right, let's go out in the field and flight test it. So what we've done here, we've taken the FLIR view, this is actually the 640 model, attached it with a standard GoPro mount here. This is a Taro gimbal adapter for the GoPro 3 and 4, so it provides power and video out. That's plugged into a little BEC here for power. On the other side here, we got a DVR to record the video, and of course our downlink, 5 gigahertz uh, immersion RC transmitter. That's all you need, actually. Now, I'm sure Raven is feeling a bit peaked at being left at home. However, we went ahead and mounted the FLIR on a DJI Phantom here. The reason we did that is to show how accessible this technology can be. You can get yourself a FLIR view for like 1700 bucks, a DJI Phantom 2, which this is, maybe 500 bucks, another couple hundred bucks for all the FPV gear, and you're ready to go with an airborne thermal imaging package for under 2500 bucks. I mean, that's a capacity which would have been unthinkable even a couple of years ago. Let's go see how it flies. Okay, so if you've never flown FPV using a thermal imaging camera before, it definitely requires a shift in, uh, in the way you see the world. We're flying in white hot right now, which means the hottest things in the frame are white. So that includes things you'd expect, like people and their dogs, but it also includes things like the path you're seeing here, because it's been absorbing the sun's rays all day, so that's showing up nice and bright too. So as you can see, I've got some people walking on the path here below me, but you can barely distinguish them against the heat of the path itself. Whereas the one person who's walking out on the grass is visible very clearly. And then in the background, you can see the vehicles moving down the roadway. And again, they're showing up nice and bright because they're very warm relative to the background. One more thing to be aware of when you're flying is that every so often, you're gonna get a flat field correction. That is, the image is gonna freeze for just a second while the sensor essentially goes through and, and sets itself back to neutral. This is so the image doesn't get too gummed up while you're flying along. So that can be a bit startling if you're not expecting it. So be aware that that's gonna happen. It's nothing to be afraid of. 
One thing to be aware of if you're mounting the camera upside down the way we did here is that in addition to flipping the image vertically, you also have to flip the image horizontally. Otherwise, when you're flying from the aircraft's perspective using FPV, the roll and yaw inputs will seem to be reversed. The aircraft's actually responding correctly. What's happening is the image is flipped around the wrong way. It makes it hard to orient yourself. All right, so that was our look at the FLIR View thermal imaging camera. Good job watching. See you next time. All right, fly safe.